Hey, everyone. Um, put my marker down in a weird spot. Okay, so hey, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about self-identification. This is the... Uh, okay, uh, I think it's the sixth video <laughs> of our Trans 101. So uh, for those of you who care about spelling, I don't know if you can see that. Let's double check really fast. Uh, no, you totally can't. Okay, so self-identification. I'm going to write it down again, and, but we're going to keep talking. So this is a trans 101 from a politicized perspective. It's less simplistic and hopefully more accurate. Um, so on that note, again, today we're going to be talking about self-identification. It's going to be pretty simple, and it might come off a little rambly, but basically the idea is that we all define our own bodies, and we all define our own psychological existence. Um, what you'll see sometimes is that even in trans, you know, supposedly trans-friendly spaces, is that there's a difference between genders that are self-evident and genders that are self-defined. Uh, Those verses <laughs> not not defined us. <laughs> I have really terrible penmanship, uh, by the way. Okay, so yeah, there are genders that are self-defined, and then there are genders that are self-evident. What does this look like? How can it be easily recognized? So, um, in some places, you'll see things like, like for example, in the bathroom, it'll say, you know, like self-identifying men welcome, self-identifying women welcome. And it's like, what? Like, if, if this is a men's bathroom, then men go in it. Does it matter? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> it, you, don't, you don't have to put the clarification of self-defined, and here is why. I don't know if you remember, um, oh, and one thing I wanted to say about this was, there's a difference between saying self-evident and self-defined. So, for example, if you are a you know, trans man or a trans woman, and you have a cisgender friend who is a man or a woman and identifies with the same terminology that you do, you don't look at yourself and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a self-defined man, but my cisgender friend over here, he's a self-evident man. Like, he just is a man, but I'm, like, a man that, like, kind of got created because I, you know, I'm, I'm a man because I say I'm a man, but he's just a man because he just is. You know, it doesn't work that way. Um, that's, a, that's a really good example of cissexism. Uh, that that is not treating cisgender people and people of trans experience equally. That's not how it works. And the here and here is why. Because I don't know if you remember when we were talking about um, when we were talking about sex and gender, we talked about how all bodies are different, therefore there are an infinite number of sexes. And we talked about how, you know, sex is a social construction and that how people have different words to define their bodies, and then we talked about how gender is a social construction and people use different terms to define their psychological existence. Um, and so in that same, on that same note, that, that applies to everybody. That doesn't just apply to people of trans experience because our agency is incredibly important, meaning I have the right over my own body more than anybody else on this planet. And, and it's funny because when I was talking about that, you know, you get to define your pronouns, you get to define your gender, you get to define your body, nobody else does. Uh, one time I was giving a workshop and someone, someone asked me, you know, like, well, hey, my mom doesn't, or my partner's mom doesn't use the right pronouns with him, what do I say? Like, you know, and she doesn't have, like, like I said, you know, about this person's mother, like, no, she doesn't have any right to misgender you. And, and you know, and, and this person said, not, not even if she's your mom, not even if she's your mom, not even your mother gets the right to misgender you. Your parents don't get the right to misgender you. I don't care if they picked your name at birth. It doesn't matter. Um, it's, it's your body. You have the ability to, to define it uh, if you want. If you don't want, that's also cool, too. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But the point is that at the end of the day, it's your right and nobody else's. So self-defined identities are the only real ones, because every identity is self-defined. Any label that is attached to
to you by somebody else is a coerced one. It's not an identity. If you choose to, to adopt that as an identity, that's fine. That's cool, you know, whatever, and such and so forth. But at the end of the day, the only real gender is, the only real sexes are the ones that we say exist about ourselves, not about other people. I don't have the right to decide what another human being eats. I don't have the right to decide where what a, another human being like, and I'm talking about like random people. I don't have the right to decide what somebody else wears. I don't have the right to decide any of those things. Um, and in that same way, I don't have the right to decide what pronouns, what gender, and what sex somebody is. Uh, I I do have the right to define those things for myself. Um, so yeah, let's. Um, so a lot of the cisgender folks might be, you know, who may be watching these videos are probably like, so Ira, are you, are you saying that, you know, if you have like a vagina or whatever, like, that, that you can just say it's not a vagina? And I'm like, well, yeah, that, that actually is exactly what I'm saying. And so you may be looking at this and being, you may be thinking like, no, Ira, that's not how bodies work. Like, you, you've got a part or you don't got it. End of story. Well, no, that's not how it works. Like, yeah, I may have a body part. Yeah, your your stuff may look really similar to my stuff. But that doesn't mean it's the same stuff. And you want to know why? Because we're two different people. Um, and so on that note, like, even cisgender people self-identify their sexes. You know, even if they identify as male or female, it doesn't matter because, it, well, I mean, it matters. That's not what I meant to say. Um, it matters, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that they all like the same terms in reference to their bodies. So... For example, cisgender women. A lot of cisgender women don't like the term pussy or cunt, for example. A lot of cisgender women don't like the term vagina because, you know, it's incredibly exclusive. It leaves out the clit, labia, and such and so forth, and other important parts of their anatomy, right? But a lot of, a lot of women don't even like talking about their stuff, and that's cool. A lot of men don't like talking about their stuff either, and I'm talking about cisgender uh, folks at the moment. Um, a lot of cisgender guys may not like the term penis. They may not like cock. They may not like you know, dick, and such and so forth. So, I mean, despite, like, medical definitions of our body parts, we all have preferences. We all have, we all have preferred pronouns. We all have preferred gender identities, um, and such and so forth. Some women don't like being referred to as ladies. Some women don't like being referred to, well, some girls don't like being referred to as women, and some women don't like being referred to as girls. Um, some ladies don't like being referred to as either. Uh, so, at the end of the day, like, or, you know, for example, some guys don't like being called dudes or guys, and some men prefer men over anything else. And some, some folks like being called sir and ma'am, and that's totally awesome. It's when we assume that everybody else should like the same thing, that it becomes problematic. So my point is, is like, yeah, so a doctor said I'm female, and a doctor said that I'm a girl or whatever. But I don't identify that way. So in the same way, like, yeah, maybe a doctor said that you're male, and you do identify as male, but it's, it's only valid that a doctor said that about you because you identify similarly. Um, it's not, you know, a doctor identified you and therefore you're more valid, more equal, and such and so forth <laughs> because you agree. Um, that's what society wants us to think, and that's what society abides by, and it's, it's crap. But yeah, does that make sense? We define our bodies. We define our psychological existence. We define ourselves. I get to define me, and you get to define you, and nobody can attach labels to either of us, and they may try, but that doesn't make it okay. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully this made sense. This is a little rambly. I was mostly talking about like the concept um, as opposed to anything else, but I wanted to break it down really fast. If you have any questions, email me. You can contact me on my blog. Uh, comment below if you would like. Um, and so yeah, <laughs> I will see you all later. Okay, bye.